Hi! Thank you once again for tuning in, or thank you for tuning in the first time. Either way, thank you so, so much for being here. Now, what are we staring at? Oh, yes, this is Bits and Bobs and Surprises, episode 15. I have some things to show you, but I'm going to start off with some something that I discovered by coincidence. But it's a good one, and it might actually be of help. Who knows? So we are looking at the underside of a leaf of my Dendrobium alexandrae crossed with polyzema. And it looks pretty bad, doesn't it? Yes. These are not spider mites. This is damage from last year from moth larvae. Yes. The caterpillar stage. The teeny, teeny, teeny little caterpillars that I think have a cycle of 24 hours because I only found them at night. One time I came down with a torch in order to see what is going on. It took down my denfowl leaves fast. Eradicated them because they grazed the underside of the leaf and then that can't heal properly. There's nothing left. So this was when the leaf was small and as it grew, of course, you know, the marks stay. But thank goodness the Alexandre crossed with Polysema was stronger than that. And my commercial denfowls were wimps and it just took it down. But I am left with these marks for the foreseeable future. And the other dendrobiums, that, well, the leaves just died off. There was nothing left of them. So that was one. I went to my garden center and said, what is going on? And they said, oh, moth larvae. And I'm like, oh, really? I don't have scale. I have a few mealybugs here and there. Moth larvae? So they gave me a sticker kind of trap thing and said, this is for moth larvae specifically because it exudes pheromones that attracts the adult moth as opposed to going and laying eggs on your plants, it will go sticky tape. Well, that never worked. I never saw a dead moth on one of those sticky tapes at all. And uh, I saw some gnats, so it's something, but it wasn't fit <laughs> for purpose. But I kept watching. This is my Dendrobium Roy Tokonaga. And it had the same thing last year, not the sunburn, that was me. But somewhere down here, trust me, there are some damaged leaves. Here we go. Same thing. Now I was quite glad that this is all the damage that happened on my Tokonaga. It has grown fabulously this year. I had a few melee issues right up here. But other than that, we are in for a show come next year. But you can see, whoa, you can see on the new growth, still have some that made it. But the growth is strong enough, that leaf is going to make it. It's not a problem. Now I want to show you something else. I know this is a long intro and we'll get to other things as well, but this is my surprise. So it fits into the series. Look at the damage on my Gloriosa leaves. Look at that. Look at the damage on my Gloriosa leaves. Where is the grazing more obvious. You see that? The grazing is exactly the same. And I have not had a single, single dendrobium go down this year because of moth larvae. And I planted my Gloriosa lily just for the sake I needed this lily, this bloom in my life. And here we are. It is the buffet for this year's moth larvae. And the beauty of the timing is, it does it after the bloom. So my moth larvae can be happy, nature can be happy, I'm happy, my, my orchids are happy. And this is the surprise that I have. A plant here that is the attraction to something that now stays away from my orchids. So there's that. I just thought, yes, long intro, but it could help someone. It certainly helped me and I'm so happy. 
let's go and see what else is going on. So based on what we just saw with the Gloriosa lily and the moth larvae, I want to show you. There's three Dendrobium phalaenopsis in this pot. Lots of sticks, not many leaves. Those were taken out. And I want to show you how it looks when it's fresh. Yay for two new growths that nothing has happened to. Roots going down into the pot. Yes, thank you, thank you. But look at this. Around the other side. This is what it looks like when the moth larvae, little caterpillar things, get into the leaf. Brand new growth. It's not going to make it. This is not going to make it. At least that leaf won't. Whether it's going to continue to grow, whether it has the energy, this is the piece it's coming from. It all looks a little sorry to me. If this growth doesn't make it, this piece is out and done. There's nothing left for it. I have another piece right here that is throwing out a new growth. So these are all the commercial denfels, but this is what my leaves, all of them, look like. And trust me, it's not spider mites. I, I looked, I checked, I treated. All of that, I did all of that last year. Not, it's not spider mites. This is what it looks like when it's fresh. And this leaf is going to go bye-bye. But, you know, <clears throat> I am, I'm just glad I'm seeing some new green come out of this. Some. So I'm not complaining. My Gloriosa Lily has absolutely surprised me and is here to stay. This is my Lelio Catlea Luminosa. Hopefully, anyway, that's what I bought. No, it hasn't bloomed for me yet, so I don't know. But I had an orchid as a juvenile, and this is another small example I wanted to show Megan, that I just potted up willy-nilly into Lekka with self-watering and didn't even think twice about the roots and whatever, it's going to be fine. Yeah, well, it wasn't because I didn't take care of the fact that I used just big lecker. This would have been the perfect candidate to use small to medium lecker to pot it up with, as opposed to just saying it'll be fine. And it took a lot, a lot of work and keeping an eye on things that it doesn't get too stressed and shriveled, like these back bulbs. Oh my goodness, they were so thin. And it was, it, it, was, um, it was very worrying. But I had made up my mind and I didn't go and start changing it again because sometimes I feel like the more I mess with an orchid, the more stress I'm putting it in. So it's like watch, watch, watch and do the best you can to help, help, help. And it doesn't help if you go burning the leaves. This is the angle of the sun. Ah, oh, I thought that when that sheet was down, that curtain there in my blooming alley was down and that this one was protected, but no, it's right on the gap. Oh well, you know what? Never mind. I, I can comfort myself with the fact that orchid need a lot of light in order to make roots. <laughs> That's my excuse. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I have some burnt leaves, I have a gorgeous new growth, and finally I've got some roots. Finally! And I'm really happy, except that this root is going up over my microfiber, and I don't want that. So, but it was hard work. Hard work. And I'm, I do kick myself for the amount of attention, eyes, my eyeballs, <laughs> on this orchid. I do kick myself because the burning was completely unnecessary. Totally unnecessary. I was always looking here. I never paid attention to up here, which is dumb was a stupid thing to do and uh, yeah well that's what happens there but Megan I was just you know when I look at this orchid I think of you and I think Catlia seedlings do really really well have no issues whatsoever to establish themselves in Lekka and semi-hydro but use just the little ones just the little ones this way it's much much easier for them and for you I didn't but now I can you it's better that you do and it's much easier 
And don't stick your orchids in the sun to fry them. Light, yes. Burn, no. But anyway, Luminosa is doing great. I'm happy. I've got roots. My Eno Bulbum Munificum or Dendrobium Munificum. I just think Eno Bulbum sounds so much better. But it has been with me also two and a half years now. I have never managed to grow the bulbs to the size that I can see back here. I got it with this bulb right there. This was the first new growth that I managed to get out of it. And it, uh, you can say it kind of reached the same height. Well, not really, that would be cheating. So it's a little bit smaller than the bulb that I got it with. But I did get two leaves, so I guess there's that. The next year then it grew this bulb and it's not yet to the stage of hairy, fuzzy like this. <laughs> but it's a bit bigger. So we got double and look at those roots. Aren't they cool? I think the roots are super, super cool. So I'm going to keep those covered up if Lekka will permit. Okay, now we're getting our new growth. So this would be growth number three for year number three of being with me here in Spain. It came from Italy. And the first time I ever saw this one was in Alberto's channel when his was in bloom. And I said, must have. And it immediately zoomed to the top of my wish list. And I found it at a nursery in Italy. And, and I got it. So here I am trying to cultivate it in such a manner that is befitting of my climate, but also that I get to see those beautiful blooms one day. And Alberto being now an Italian in queue, and that is his Instagram handle as well. But yeah, Winnie Bourbon, come on. I find you extremely, extremely weird. I love you to bits. You should have, you know, should grow your bulbs during a time of year where actually you can manifest a significant size. But all right, you've got a new growth coming. You do you. Hakuna Matata. So there's that. And then behind me, I want to show you something. So I'm just going to not make you dizzy. But it's silly to start another clip. All right. This is how, so far, the pieces of the Vandas are doing. We've got Lavender Mist swimming right at the bottom there. And Denisoniana Dark Chocolate Star doing the piggyback on the top. Now they've been in here for two hours already. And you can see I've submerged Lavender Mist completely. Then when her space on the, other, on the west side is in shade, I will lay her flat and until I have made a special hanger for her. That is how these guys are doing. And I can't tell you after a couple of days whether they're doing better or not. But I can tell you that I feel much better that they are small again and I can accommodate their needs. So I hope I'm doing this right. But so far I do not see rapid deterioration and I do not see any more stress damage so I'm hoping I'm hoping and to wrap this up can you see what I see which is not fair because I know where to look and everything is green on green on green it's like saying can you see that tree over there and you're like going what tree well the tree over there and you're actually staring on the front line of a forest not really fair is it so let me show you by Pro Cutter Boulder, Golden Peacock. Coming back. One, two, three. Big spike. Lots of buds. I gotta take care of that. So, three spikes. Golden Peacock is coming back after a couple of months of a rest. Well deserved, well deserved, well deserved. She bloomed for me. Wow. Ten months on the trot, spike after spike after spike. And then just now maturing her new growth three months later we're back and I'm happy happy for it very much looking forward to that first time bloomer Nanipuakea Dogashima this is great it gives me 
confidence. It makes me feel like I do know what I'm doing on some occasions because it grew always so beautifully, never a problem, but it never bloomed. So I tucked it over to my east side where normally the others would be hiding behind a curtain in shade. This one had light in a corner where the curtain wouldn't cover it. And look what we've got here. One bundle, one spike, two spikes, three spikes, four spikes, one bud, but I'll count it, five. Never, never count your buds until they haven't bloomed. I made that mistake with my Peggy Ruth Carpenter. I've had her allocated and this afternoon I go and check the spike and it's turning yellow. Nightmare. Terrible, terrible. But five, I will definitely be able to give one bloom away out of five spikes. And out of three spikes, <laughs> there's certainly going to be a bloom in there as well to give away. So I'm quite confident that we shall see a bloom, if only one, on Nani Puakea. But it would be wonderful to see them all. Fingers crossed. Thank you so very much, much for watching. I appreciate your time very much and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.